This is very cool. So anything LLM lets you configure custom workspaces and then add information to the RAG database really easily. <clears throat> so for example, let's use the scraper and we're going to get some information that is on the Elementor help website. So this is the part of the help. Um, if I try and do all of it, I don't know that it will work. It seems like there's a timeout if you make it run for too long. So it looks to me like everything is within two clicks, if not one click. So like this here, customization, and then there's that click. And so there's two clicks to get to the information, right? So that's that's the depth of the information. So, so we've got our URL. I'm going to do a crawl depth of two, and we're going to do 200 pages. Uh, so let's just do submit. Now, it doesn't really tell you what's going on here, which is, um, you know, it's not, it's not exactly useful. So, but what you can do, well, at least I can on the Coolify Docker, and I guess there's probably other things like this in Docker Desktop. I don't know. I'm not really across all of that. But you can see the status of what's happening in the logs. So like this was one I was doing earlier just to like check and see that it would work. And this is the new task that we just just ran. So um, that should think about it now and start working soon. The vector database that I've got it on is the default, which is this one called Lance DB. I've never used it before, but it seems fine. Um, I don't know, it just comes built into it and doesn't seem to have any problems, so that's cool. It should start, once it's found the links, and it usually takes, like for this amount of links, I guess it would take a few minutes, so um, it won't take too long. Um, so anything LLM has, the, the one I've got running is the Docker one, but it wasn't completely without any effort to get it right in the configuration. So I guess uh, if you just want to kind of muck around with this, you probably should just try the cloud one unless you're kind of good with server stuff, which I'm not, and I needed help from our DevOps people. So, you know, uh, your mileage may vary, but um, some of the things like getting the MCPs to work, it was just sort of beyond my... Um, initial understanding. Okay, cool, so now it's scraping the links. Okay, so not a not too big a one to do, so we might just let it run and just see how this goes. So uh, I'm not actually sure how it does this. I didn't really see anything in the documentation about it using a scraper and it's not, it doesn't install other packages. So like it's not like it's got crawl for AI in here or um, you know, I haven't added Firecrawl or anything to it. This is just like the built-in, I guess it just does like a HTTP call maybe to the page. Anyway, whatever it does, it's clever enough to do it by itself. So that's cool. Uh, it, it's running at about yeah one page every, what, 10 seconds or so. Um, this is just on a server. Like I said, it's a Coolify server set up with OVH. Um, seems to run fine, doesn't have any special graphics cards or anything. Um, I have connected it to Google Gemini as the main chat provider, but you can choose heaps of other ones, like if you go to the settings, uh, I won't cancel that, so if you have a look at the settings in a workspace, um, some interesting things here. So you can give it a name, you can put in a like pre-configured message, so it's kind of like a you know a question you can just click and it injects that text straight in. You can assign a image to the profile um, and that's the little like, I don't know, like thumbnail picture of the person I guess. Chat settings, there's heaps of models. I, I've not even heard of all of these 
honestly, like just everything you can imagine is in here. So yeah, I've just been letting it work with the Gemini models. You can set a system prompt, you can put these little variables in, which is neat, and you can add more variables. Uh, I don't quite understand how you get dynamic ones, but you can certainly add them in. The, it's the refusal and temperature, that's pretty cool. Um, the agent configuration, so this is, so like, this is the chat agent, and this is the agent agent. <laughs> so, um, you know, that the, 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 the agent skills are like across the whole workspace. They're not on a kind of per workspace basis. But so you could have like a more complex agent for the chat, I guess, and then like an easier one for the agent space where it's doing like the tool calls. And the vector database, you can set like um, accuracy optimized. You can set how many context snippets. So it's like how much... Um, out of the rag it's bringing into the chat and then you've got this setting here for the similarity threshold which I guess is like how how like strictly it matches what's going on so let's see it looks like we um, oh, because I was doing some stuff it's like that that happened okay so but it's done the pages great so if we go back here successfully scraped 24 pages fantastic okay so in documents now if I just collapse that, we've got this here. So this is the uh, like the, the files that it's brought in. And so what we can do is select those and move those to the workspace. So this is like kind of preparing to get into the rag. So now if I press save and embed, this process runs and it starts to do the chunking. Uh, yeah, so like it breaks up the files into chunks. And I, I haven't changed these settings, so I don't know. I, I, I don't know how big those settings should be or whatever, but it's it, it is just the default at this stage, which is fine. So now that's in there, and we might do the other one that I got before, which was the editor. So I'll just move that there. Save and embed. You can see uh, it says how it's starting the splitting process. I'm just using the built-in splitter. You can, there is an option to send it out to like OpenAI or Gemini or something, but I mean, this is kind of free, so um, seems like that's a good, I mean, if it works fine, I don't, probably need to use the external one, I guess. I don't know, maybe if my documents were needed more complicated chunking, I'm not sure. I don't know enough about that yet to have an opinion on what's good or not. Uh, but it does it does do this very nicely, like it just works its way through it. Um, it's and like I've looked at doing this kind of thing with like a workflow in N8N and I can see how it's possible, but oh, it's just like not super easy. But even then, like one of the things I was trying to figure out is how do you put a front end, like a workspace here for myself or for a client or for our team, like how do I put a front end on a bunch of N8N flows and a lot of the stuff I would want to do actually probably just needs a good rag like I don't need tools for everything okay so we've got all those files there now and that should mean they are all um, all in the rag database so if I close this now go to the vector Okay, so we can see this is the vector count. So that's like how many, I guess they're called chunks, right? That are in there. Okay, so if I now go back to the chat and say, uh, how do I insert an image with Elementor? Now the thing is, at the moment we've got it set to use the 
LLM and the RAG, which so it would be using like Google Cloud, but also not. So what it's done here is put in the the links, right? These are these are the chunks, I guess, that it's pulled from the Elementor website. Um, that's the information it put in, and I don't know if that's like good, but that's what it did. Well, it seems good, like it's it's fine. Right? <laughs> um, you know, it's it's interesting trying to figure out like what you need, what kind, like how good an answer do you need even? Um, but yeah, like it's seems like it just works fine you know like there's no kind of um, difficulty with it so I don't know I, 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 it just seems like a I don't know if this is not exciting but it seems really cool to me that I can just come in here add a workspace put a whole pile of documents in it so it can do Google Docs PDFs all that sort of stuff and then away it goes and I know like Google and Microsoft are kind of building this into their tools now so you know you can kind of like ask questions of your google drive i guess but if you don't want to do that then something like this might be a good way of doing it i guess